I've learned how to how to start it, how to get the marker to go, how to make it turn, how to make it have a light show, and even how to make music notes come out of it. Isabel is not a computer whiz, but she's programming a robot. Impressive for an 11-year-old, but her friends Sarah, 8, and Mia, just 5, are also coding computers. Coding is in everything around us. It's this invisible magic that's in the air in the devices we use. Simply put, coding is a fancy way of giving instructions to a computer to make it perform. And this toy robot can teach anyone how to do it. From anywhere from level one, where I don't even know how to read, don't even know how to um, even write, but I can understand graphical pictures and what they represent. Z Dabrowski is co-founder of Root Robotics. Using a mobile app, any kid can teach Root to draw, scan colors, play music, respond to touch, even climb walls using magnets on a whiteboard. It's really simple, isn't it? Very, very simple. So even a meteorologist could do this? Absolutely. <laughs> and as a child gets more comfortable, the coding becomes more dynamic. You can introduce math, you can introduce logic, you can introduce variables and you, you have this transferable knowledge that you never start in this blank screen of like intimidation of what do I do next. Root was designed for young people to teach them skills they'll need in the 21st century and have fun doing it. But also, Root can teach anyone of any age coding skills. It's all about kind of continually building up the skills that you've previously learned. So what does Root have to do with keeping your kid's room clean? Enter iRobot the maker of the Roomba. Have them do things that back 20 years ago, you needed a PhD in computer science in 10 years to even imagine doing. iRobot was so impressed with Root, they bought the company this summer and are using it as part of their mentoring program. With Root, if you can code in level three, that's text-based coding, well, you can code. You didn't just play a game, you learned a marketable skill. Debbie Latour was born without an arm. In the 1950s, they didn't let children wear prosthetics until they were five years old. But with her parents' insistence, Shriners Hospital made an exception. And at just 14 months, she became one of the youngest people to ever wear an artificial limb. To my parents, this first device offered hope. Oh, really? Their hope that I would be able to do everything that a two-handed child could do. Debbie went on to become an occupational therapist, and 50 years later, she's now advising on the next generation of prosthetics. We know a lot more about the engineering and the mathematics. She knows a lot more about how people actually use the arm, how they do these tasks, and how we can test them. Ted Clancy and his team at Worcester Polytech Institute are working with Debbie to develop the next mm -hmm. wave of devices. They've developed an algorithm that allows users to open a round doorknob. And that's a big challenge, isn't it? Be able to use both the hand and the wrist at the same time is a big challenge with the prosthetic. By detecting an electrical signal from the brain that is just one one hundredth of a volt, they can make a device move more freely. We can sense that electrical signal and, and then use that electrical signal to control the hand and the wrist. All this technology of gears, wires, and processors creates a second challenge, weight. So the WPI team is developing tiny Wi-Fi sensors located in a band that fits around the residual limb. No wires, no equipment needed. That goes in between a set of electrodes that are uh, sensing the electrical activity of his muscle here, mm -hmm. uh, and those would be muscles that are still remaining on an amputee, for example, and then algorithms that we develop that then tell the hand how to perform and how to move. Nearly two million people in the U.S. are living with limb loss. Another 185,000 amputations will occur here every year. The overall goal is to make the prosthesis more usable for people. They can do more tasks with them, uh, feel better about what they're doing, and, and more participatory in society. And the Wi-Fi prosthesis is only available in the lab right now, but it should be available for people to test in the next right. few months. And as the developers told Mike, this will be a real game changer mm -hmm. for amputees. Oh, it's crazy. It's fantastic. Uh, back to Root Robot. Uh, they've tested more than 5,000 of those in schools. They're brand new. They just went on sale, actually, at the end of last year. They're under $200. Wow. They're very popular. All right. Grocery shopping made easy.